Sudden ni mana? Okay. Yeah. Right, yes, dah. Okay, so do you love the chapter? Is it interesting ataupun susah lah cikgu? It's interesting. Wow. Okay, that is something rare. Best, tapi dah lupa sikit. Okay, kalau faham meiosis, that is really good. Okay, meiosis is not an easy chapter. Okay, it's something it takes, yes, very difficult too. Okay, it is something that takes um, time to understand. Pening sikit buat ni. Ha, baru keluar semua benda. Okay, it, it's normal. Tak belajar lagi. It's okay. Interesting lah juga. Okay. Alright, so let's get started. We're already 10 minutes behind. Everyone is here. So, let's go. This is what happens in your body. Now, mitosis semua dah patut faham sekarang. Di mana mitosis is where your body is carrying out replication untuk menambahkan sel. Apabila sel kita, kita uh, get old, your cells die. So, you need to repair your body cells which are damaged. So, you create more cells. People say people change. Bukan transformer saja yang berubah, manusia juga berubah. And that is true. After a period of time, your entire body cell since birth akan berubah. You would never be the same. Meaning, all of your body cells from age 0 to eight, hitting age 8 will be there. And then all of it will die by then. And then from that age, you'll be having a new cells of growth. Tapi bukan when all die, you pun die lah. It doesn't work like that. It is a progress. Cell division is a daily progress. It's not an event. Okay, it's not success. Okay, so sperm haploid end to end all. I think the terms you guys probably will be very familiar. As you can see over here, meiosis is something where you get one end, another end from your sperm and your egg. All right, so it's a haploid, haploid. Jadi pula haploid. Okay, now, with a pet, one from your daddy, one from your mummy. Okay, this process is not possible if both of your parents are males or both of your parents are females. You probably have to adopt a kid or carry out um, um, IVR, okay? So in vitro fertilization. Okay, so now, when this happens during coitus or um, what's the better name? Uh, sexual activity, okay, or coitus, okay. What happens is the sperm will be infusing with the female's egg, right? Therefore, fertilization occurs inside the female's body, in her ovum, all right, forming the zygote, okay, where it's a diploid with two N. Now, daddy's sperm is going to go here, and egg mummy's ovum is going to go there, and N, boogie, meiosis, this is part of meiosis, right? And then goes to the fertilization part. That is when zygote is formed. That is your, you, that is you, right? That is us, that is me, everyone starts as a zygote, right? Two N is started from there. Once from there, you are carrying out continuous mitosis till who you are today, a 17-year-old teenager, right? So you have somatic cells. If you're a female, you might have a ovum germ cell. If you're a male, you'll have a testis germ cell. So this is a mitosis stage until you meet your future partner and carry out coitus or a sexual activity where you carry out the meiosis process for your future kid. This is how this whole circle happens. This is how humans replicate and reproduce to bring our future generation inheritance kita panggil ya. So where does meiosis occur in a male and female human? Inside testis in male and inside ovaries of female. So, meiosis in plant ni paling peling. Okay, especially because male, female, you faham. It's part of you. It's easy to understand. Now, meiosis in plant. All you know, it looks beautiful, but you don't even know where's the enter stigma petal. If you don't know, you need to learn now because it's a very important part, part in biology. Without plants, we are not here. So this is, can you see the pictures clearly? Boleh zoom tak? Nampak tak everything? So if you remember in school, if you learn in school, macam Hadina tak baca lagi, it's okay. It is um, quite complicated sebab the female punya ovary dengan male punya enter is in the same plan. Dia tak payah nak cari pasangan dia, nak travel, nak whatsapp or call or whatever. It's in the same plant. 
so it can reproduce much more easier. No competition much pun. Okay, now petal, stigma, filament, anther, stamen. All right, so ovary is at the couple. All right, and that is the tip is the stigma. Okay, and anther is where it's like the sperm lah. All right, so um, that's where we have microsporangium, microspores, ataupun uh, microspores only I'll call it. No, do not look at other in very detailed terms. Tak payah. So meiosis is the process of nuclear division that reduces the number of chromosomes in new cells to half the number of chromosomes in parent cells. Sperm and ovum, pollen grains and egg cells. This is for male and female. This is for plants. So meiosis produces reproductive cells, which is called gametes. Significance of meiosis. Kenapa perlukan significance of meiosis? But why do we need meiosis? It reduces chromosomes number from 2N to N. Now, by doing that, you are allowing a promoting uh, genetic diversity, variation. Di mana kita dapat muka Asian, um, African body, white hair, white people, black people, um, Caucasians, Western people, Arabs, Indians, Chinese. A lot of variation of people, right? Kulit je ada dekat 10 jenis warna. Languages, we have so many languages, you know? So we are super diverse and that is a great thing, right? If everyone had the same immune system, the whole world would be dead because of Corona. And that is not the situation now. We are still winning. So kudos to Dr. Hicham. Now, unique phenotypes may give a reproductive advantage to some organisms. Okay, phenotype ni upper. We have genotype and phenotype. Phenotype in simple terms is like a trait that we have that is seen and that it can be observed. So that is an advantage when it comes to reproduction. Which process restores the dipod number of chromosomes? 23, 23, jadi anak, that is 46. That is called fertilization when the ovum meets the sperm or sperm swims across thousands of other sperms and hits the ovum the first. Therefore, you guys are all winners today. Now, meiosis reduces the chromosome number. Fertilization restores the dipod number. Okay, faham tak? Meiosis adalah satu sistem yang di mana, it's just a straight number. Okay, sorry, mitosis. The uh, 46, dihasilkan 46 keluar. Here, 46 is coming out from your male. One is from your female. Pink is the ma female. Male is the, uh, sorry, blue is the male. So, perempuan meiosis starting with 46 chromosomal number. Meiosis process in the ovaries, you have 23 chromosomal number of egg. 46 is for um, guys. In your sperm, that's 23. 23, 23, jadi 46, fertilization occurs, you are getting two genetic traits from two different humans. You are being a new soul, new body with new genetic traits, not as similar to your mom or your dad, but shared. So, features of meiosis and mitosis. Ni, we are going in detail, the technical part. Meiosis satu, uh, ada kita ada meiosis one and meiosis two. So, you will learn apakah beza ania. Meiosis one is very similar to Mitosis. Go the other way around. Uh, yeah, yes, this one is very similar. Okay, so what happens? Very simple. Interface of meiosis 1. And then meiosis 1 happens, meiosis 2 happens. Okay, before that, before we get into this, do we have any questions? Guys, ada apa-apa soalan tak? Clear. So far, intro clear. Any question before we start? No teacher. Okay. Everyone okay? Ke I laju sangat ataupun bahasa Melayu kena tambah lagi or too much of Malay, too less English, or too less, too more English, too less Malay. Any problems? Need more Malay, Okay. Okay, teacher. Nope, nope. XD. All right. Boleh, boleh. Tapi the thing is, I would suggest you to learn the terms in English because once you have finished it, if you have interest in bio, all right, your tertiary education, sorry to say, they will teach you just like how I'm teaching you. That is why I'm practicing English like this. Kita akan pakai terms dalam bahasa Inggeris, tapi boleh belajar dalam bahasa Melayu supaya anda faham lagi senang, all right? Even though I'm an Indian, I prefer to learn in Basa Melayu juga because I'm trained like that. So that is how I can train you guys as well. 
it's best for you to learn the terms in English. When you write, boleh pakai dua bahasa. Rojak pun boleh. Your SPM allows that. Right? So, tapi if you dah terbiasa sangat dengan terms dalam um, Malay, go for it. No problem. Right? But when I'm teaching, my slides are mostly in English. I'm sorry for that. But starting next week, I'll be using the module di mana akan ada dua bahasa. Tapi you won't be having much more gambar. So, that's why I'm rushing a bit. So, you can use the slides. Okay? So, let's get in. Meiosis, interface of one. Interface is something you have before your PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, right? So interface of meiosis one, you are the homologous pair of chromosomes in diploid parent cells. Okay, how is the haploid condition achieved? Chromosomes replicate once but divide twice. Tell me, faham tak? Okay, chromosome akan replicate sekali je, tapi akan divide twice. Why? Because as you can see in the gambar, homologous pair akan berlaku, okay? replicated chromosomes, sister chromatids are formed and diploid cells with replicated chromosomes are created. So this is how interface happens. Daripada satu strand, warna biru, warna merah, alright, it is replicated but divide twice. Okay, so it's replicated but divide twice, jadi the X formation like that. And then it is dividing twice into meiosis. Now during meiosis, homologous chromosomes separates, right, separates into like this. Daripada X, dia akan jadi 1-1. Nampak tak? Interface to meiosis 2. What happens? During meiosis 2, sister chromatids separates to N and N. Haploid cells with unreplicated chromosomes. Meiosis 1 is haploid cells with replicated chromosomes. So, chromosomes have this conden uh, tendency to condense. Maksudnya, dia akan condense and swirl jadi um, macam the X formation that you see in this gambar raja. Alright? When it breaks down, it becomes a straight strand like that. Just like mitosis. Okay, so far, any questions? Okay, right? All right, time is ticking. So, as you can see here, meiosis 1, reduction division. Apa berlaku is, early prophase 1, chromosomes numbers are doubled, okay? And then late prophase pula, okay? As you can see in the gambar, dia dah menjadi condensed and thicker. Nucleus sudah hilang, nuclear envelope sudah pecah. And your spindle fibers are starting to form, right? Now, metaphase, sama macam mitosis, right? Okay, this is your prophase. Metaphase pula, spindle uh, fibers go to the uh, opposite ends already, are being released, okay? Your chromosome is aligned in the equator, done. Anaphase, okay? Spindle fibers are attached to the centromeres of each homologous chromosome. Okay, and they are being pulled away. All right, now, telophase pula, sama. Okay, cleavage is happening. And then it's closing. Now, apa beza dia? If you nampak in detail in the gambar, you will see the beza. Nampak tak? The biru punya chromosome, awal-awal, early prophase, it's all blue, it's all green. Late prophase, you nampak crossing over happening. That's why in metaphase, you nampak, ada yang hijau, ada yang biru. Ada yang hijau and biru, biru and hijau. Do you notice that? There is four patterns of chromosomes in metaphase one. Nampak tak? Boleh zoom in tak? Do you guys notice that? Nampak, okay. That is one crossing over happens, the most important phase. Now, prophase one may last a long time. Okay, may last a long time. Human males about one week of prophase one, one month, one month for an entire meiotic cell cycle. Human females, prophase one begins before birth and ends up to decades later during the monthly ovarian cycle. Simple Joe, prophase is your sperm production. Human females or prophase is you're talking about your ovum production, okay? Walk to baby pun you dah ada dah. Formation of ovums. Be until your decades. Males, when they hit puberty, start lah. Alright. So, prophase one. Interface and prophase. This is how um, meiosis happens. Central some centrosomes with central pairs. Chromatin, nuclear envelope. Chromosomes will start to duplicate. Okay. Then kita ada chiasmata. Okay, chiasmata, this is a new term. 
very simple. Chest mata is the location of crossing over. So nampak tak? You have two type of colored of uh, chromosomes. Satu daripada ibu, satu daripada mama. Sorry, same je. Satu daripada ayah, satu daripada mama. Okay, apa berlaku di sini? Okay, crossing over happens. Therefore, you will have a new set of tetrads. Okay, which we call it bivalent. Okay, very simple. Homologous chromosomes pair and exchange segments. When they exchange segments, you are sharing your uh, it's 926. Okay, you're sharing your DNA, right? So tetrads form in prophase one each with six chromatids. Homologous chromosomes join to form a tetrad. Me is through the process called synapsis. So homologous chromosome they join untuk menghasilkan tetrad. This is how it looks. So they join together like this. Why? So a crossing over happens. When crossing over happens as chiasmata, okay, what happens is Nampak tak? The recombinant chrom chrom chromatids. It is a very clear gambar to show you guys the changes that happens in the chromosomes while sharing it. You mungkin tanya macam mana dia cut and paste ke? It's not like that. Right, what happens in when they cross over, DNA is being crossed. Your traits are being crossed by the chromosomes. So that is, this colouring is shown that daripada merah, they cross. They bagi a bit of information to the biru. Daripada biru, dia bagi a bit of information to merah. Jadi, end of the day, you dapat a, a same uh, homologous chromosome. Each pair has DNA daripada your dad from one type of chromo sister chromatid and another type of sister chromatid. Each have it. This is how genetic crossing over is happening. Variance is happening. Therefore, you get your genetic traits from your father and your mother. This is the whole concept of meiosis. The most important part which is in Prophase 1. Ada apa-apa soalan based on this slide? This is crossing over in a much more uh, easier manner explained. Maternal meaning mother, that is your red. Paternal is your father. So tetrad is forming. This is how it combine and condense. Um, sharing over is genetic traits, crossing over process produces variation in gametes. Simple lah. Your mera gene is from your mom. Your mom is a very, very um, tall lady. Your dad is your blue gene. Your dad is a very, very short guy. Now, crossing over happens. Sekarang kita ada dua chromosome at the end. Left and right, eh? you can see here. Satu banyak merah, satu banyak biru. So, both have a very high chance to be the same height. So, while you're getting your mom's DNA, your dad's DNA. So, which part of it expresses the height um, factor will determine your height. Alright? Is there any questions regarding this? Faham tak concept crossing over ni? Ke W dah kenapa ada warna merah, ada warna biru? Faham. Okay. It's best if you practice drawing just like how the pictures were uh, done. Alright. So, prophase one. Early prophase. Homologous chromosomes pair up and synapsis happens. Crossing over occurs. Okay. And then late prophase is when uh, chromosomes become shortened and thickened. Alright. Spindle fiber is forming nuclear membrane dengan nucleus fragment. Okay. Akan... Um, Pecah lah. Alright. So, nampak tak the beza between early prophase dengan late prophase? Apa berlaku? Dua benda berlaku. Right? And that is the simple ones is your nuclear membrane dengan nucleus fragment. Okay. Pecah. Hilang. Nuclear membrane. Uh, nucleus disintegrates. Okay. Centrioles move to op opposite poles. Your spindle fibers are formed. Ataupun ester is formed. Tapi the most important part of prophase 1 is synapses. Crossing over is happening. Alright. So the longer the chromosome, the more chiasmata that can form. So the crossing over possibilities. Right? So this is how the chiasmata is formed. Prophase 1. Now we go to metaphase. 
So meiosis is quite a lot, right? Well, I think we'll cover all of PMAT today, PMAT stage one. So homologous pairs of chromosomes align along the equator. Nampak tak? Now pairing, uh, crossing over is done. Kita ada satu warna hijau, fully, warna biru, fully. Kita ada satu major, uh, um, mostly blue, a bit of it is green. Another one is mostly green, a bit of it is blue, right? You can see in the gambar clearly, right? All right. So Hadina, since you just joined back, this is metaphase. We just completed prophase. Right, so metaphase is when they are aligning at the equator again. Now, this is how it looks like. Okay, multiple coloring might be used to uh, explain to you guys, but the concept is the same. All right, now let's look at anaphase. Di mana dia ditarik balik? Okay, so what happens ditarik balik is uh, homologous pair separate and move to the opposite pole. Therefore, sister chromatids remain attached at their central mirror. Okay, so they form that thread. In your normal mitosis, you will notice it wouldn't be like this. Right? It wouldn't be like this at all. But in, in NFS2, you will see it's very similar to your mitosis. Alright? So, this is how homologous pairs separate and move to opposite poles and sister chromatids remain attached at the central mirror. Now, anaphase is done. What we have is telophase. Telophase 1 nuclear membrane mulela come back, right? If the come back, nucleus reappear because they're going to become a new cell again. And cell needs nucleus so that it has genetic information so it can continue the cell division. All right? Especially now it's going to carry on mitosis, right? Now, Spindle fiber disappears, cytokinesis divides cell into two, menjadi dapat cleavage for row, jadi dua cell asing, two daughter cells, okay, equals to haploid, and haploid, so two ends. Now telophase, telophase is how it's done, and meiosis one is done. Okay, so meiosis one is chromosomes number has been cut in half, and results to haploid cells. All right. Now we are going to go to meiosis two, similar to mitosis. All right. This is what I said initially. Okay, I saw the timing. Good. Your meiosis one is completely unique because it has crossing over. Meiosis two is exactly the same as mitosis. Exactly. So it's senang lah nanti nanti. Right. So your homework, guys. I'm gonna tell you homework now itself. Your homework is. Uh, last week, Aisha draw and submit to me mitosis. This week, everyone here, 18 orang tadi 20, hilang dah. Everyone here has to draw meiosis and give it to me. Tak payah mitosis. Meiosis je. Because mitosis will be a part in your meiosis. Aisha, I hope you don't mind you doing two work. But it's for your learning as well. So your homework is draw meiosis and mitosis. Essential. Tak lukis, tak pernah lukis. Guarantee tak boleh lukis waktu SPM. Definitely you need to draw. There will be at least one question. Drawing question. Right. Yes? I heard someone talking but tak tahu siapa. Apa soalan dia? Lah, dah hilang dah. Okay. Teacher, can I show my drawing here? It's okay, you send it to me personally. Where I need to send the drawing, I will create a homework session on Facebook. Are you guys on Facebook? Later you guys will get the link towards our Facebook, uh, Esther Tushan Facebook link. So I will update uh, where to submit, when to submit the homework. Okay, no worries. My Facebook name is called Suba Warren. It's for the tuition purpose only, not the other one. Okay, that's two. Okay. That's stated. Now let's go to meiosis 2. Now we will look at prophase 2. Meiosis 2 is similar to mitosis. Mitosis, you can end up dengan two daughter cells. Here you can end up dengan four haploid identical cells, daughter cells. Okay, so prophase 1, you have two cells breaking down. Okay, or carrying out meiosis. All right, this is how it works. Okay, so you nampak. Dalam prophase 1, you have to do a cell. Satu cell ada one fully hijau small sister chromatid. Okay. Atas ada one huge uh, homologous pair of chromosomes. 
okay with majority blue and a small segment green down cell pula cell yang di bawah you nampak satu uh, you have a whole homologous chromosome filled with blue dna only therefore it's blue in color one more is majority um, filled with green color one more is blue in color so when you draw it's best for you to do uh, using colored pens as well Okay, SPM pun digalakkan pakai pen warna hitam ataupun um, biru or you just draw using pencils lah. Alright, so metaphase 2 is when um, the spindle fiber is formed um, they are pulling towards prophase 1, your nucleus dah hilang, your nucleolus is dis disintegrates, okay, your centrioles dah mula keluarkan spindle fiber. Metaphase, they dah attach the cut. Sorry, the chromosomes will be aligned at the equator. Spindle fibers akan dikeluarkan sudah. Alright, and the face pula, spindle fibers akan target the centrum yang tengah-tengah of your homologous chromosome. Nanti dia akan tarik kepada hujungnya. Okay, so dia akan tarik kepada hujungnya. What happens is, you are having your each of your chromosomes at your opposite poles, forming two different cells. Then, the low face happens. Your nucleus is forming back. Your nuclear membrane is falling back. Your nucleus mula uh, datang balik. Centrioles disintegrates. Cleavage furrow is forming. Therefore, in your cytokinesis, cytoplasm is formed and four identical haploid cells telah pun dihasilkan. Sekarang kita ada empat jenis sel di mana empat-empat ada unique variation dia sendiri. Thanks to crossing over that happened in prophase 1. Now, you will need to know the differences, comparison, you are the banyak table yang you boleh buat and understand this also. So, prophase 2 is when nucleus membrane, nucleus fragments, spindle fiber forms, centrioles uh, move to opposite pole. Ni semua dah cakap dah, right? So, prophase 2, metaphase, I told already. Okay, this is just a detailed explanation. It's the chromatin separate and move to opposite pole. And a phase, the phase happens. So, spindle fiber disappears, cytokinesis form. Alright, this is basically everything I said. Okay, the chromosomes akan yang long and thin akan deconcess jadi shorter and thicker. X is results of meiosis. Right, gametes, X sperms form four haploid cells with one copy of each uh, chromosomes. Okay, now this is your digital gamba. Okay, early prophase how it looks, mid prophase how it looks. Nampak tak ada the crossing over so condensed, so clumsy, macam tu. So this is how it is looking, late prophase macam mana once crossing over is done. Nampak the X formation, you can zoom in a bit. It's a very beautiful picture in my opinion, all right? So meiosis 1, this is how it looks. And I face the reduction division. This is exactly how it looks, guys. This is so beautiful. You always nampak gambar raja, apa ni, merah, putih, semua tu nampak. This is how digitalized under uh, UV light looks like. Your cells movement. Memang nampak semua merah sebab they are colorless. DNA is colorless. Uh, but they are visible because it is super, super long. It is extremely long but it's extremely condensed. Therefore, it's visible to eyes. So, I've extracted DNA daripada buah. I have done recombinant DNA as a biotech student. So, it's really interesting to see this. Um, and this is how it looks like actually, anaphase, telophase and all. So centromere remains intact. Okay. So meiosis 2, no interface happens or very short um, DNA. This is for upper. Okay, this looks more like the for plants, right? This is how it looks like for plants. All right, what phase is meiosis? Telophase or telophase 2? This is something you would know. Okay. Which stage is it? No, you never said there was a second interface. So this is how the chromosomes break down. And the stage is so video tapu. All right, that is telophase 2. All right, now, genetic variation is almost infinite as a result of meiosis. Okay, simple. Apa maksud dia? Sekarang, satu mami, satu ayah, anak ada 20 pun, tapi takkan ada satu pun muka yang sama unless they are twins. Setuju tak? Yes. If they say someone, eh, tadilah muka I dengan muka abang saya sebiji. 
tipulado. Okay, impossible for you to have the same face. People can say it because there's a lot of identification, similarities, tapi you know, it's definitely not the same. Okay, kalau you tengok cerita yang cakap, oh, muka abang dengan adik sama, tipu. Diorang tak ada bajan dan hire actor lain. Tu je. So, genetic variation causes impossible for you to have your own siblings to have the same faces. Okay? And it's a good thing. Alright? So, name and describe two main advantages of meiosis. Okay? Creates new combinations of genes which may result in the offspring being able to survive in a changing environment. Why is this a situation? Okay, very simple. We must accept diver diversification. Okay, I'm not saying, okay, if you're a Malay, go and marry Indian or Chinese, accept diversification, nanti jadi masalah pula. But it's a good thing if you're bold and you fall in love with a partner who's like that. I will strongly agree and go for it. Because diversification only happens where the best equal traits, some worst traits will be passed on. But it's okay when there is good, that is also bad. So, will be passed on, you're getting two superior genes from one person, from one race, from one culture, from one ethnic from another person also, okay, it is into one offspring. You're going to be a super baby, not so super lah, but you're going to get genetic traits from two traits of different unique person. Okay, so by doing this, you are, uh, it's a blessing. Now, I'm not saying, uh, jangan kawin the same race, or jangan kawin the same uh, type of person you meet, okay, but diversification scientifically causes and shows a lot of good benefits and one of the main reasons is because we have to survive. Human punya utmost purpose of living is to survive and diversification is the only um, option brings upon that survival in terms of biology. Okay, kalau dalam dunia ni semua um, plants are beautiful and smelling good, the world will be destroyed. If semua plants are genes yang ada daun je tak ada bunga, the world will be destroyed. This is how your world works. Okay, the whole world works that way. You need to have some plants which are no bright colors, no special traits. You need to have some plants with some special traits. You need to have some plants with honey producing plants, some plants with bitter fruit producing, sweet fruit producing. So, this will make a balanced ecosystem and therefore survival of life keeps on going on. Okay, halves the number of chromosomes so that after fertilization, the dipod number is restored. Only when it's halved, okay, you can get your equal share of your chromosomal numbers from your mom and dad and fertilization enables you to create a zygote with the dipod number of chromosomes. Activity, what is this? Okay. Comparing meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, activity 9, mine, and mine, skip, 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 skip. This is a beautiful thing. Okay. This is your whole mitotic and meiotic cell division. And this is the same for meiosis. Meiosis 1, meiosis 2. Right? I've already explained this. Okay, here we have a table to break it down. Mitosis involves cell division, chromosomes replicate once. Okay, mitosis is involving somatic cells, meiosis is gamete cells, tapun in testis or ovary, that is your gamete cells. Mitosis involves two daughter cells, meiosis akan menghasilkan empat daughter cells. Okay, mitosis creates two daughter cells. Cells divide once in mitosis, cells divide twice in meiosis. Parent cells is similar from daughter cells, parent cells are different from daughter cells. Okay, meiosis have crossing over, mitosis has no crossing over. Too simple, yeah. Is it too simple or do you guys have any doubts or questions? This is a detailed explanation, guys. All right, so both mitosis, meiosis, okay. Dia mengadakan cell division untuk menghasilkan daughter cells. Memang the chromosome replicate once in S phase during interface. Okay, ada G1, G2, S phase kan? Alright, so the process occurs in somatic cells such as skin, your organs. So mitosis, you look at mitosis cell, div uh, cell division occurs to cure it. 
meiosis, gonads, all your gamete cells, ovaries, testes, four daughter cells, okay, here two, genetically identical in mitosis, skin you tercala, skin baru keluar, kalau skin you awal-awal putih takkanlah skin hitam pula yang keluar, kan, skin putih yang keluar, tapi genetically difference in meiosis is when mommy can be a Jewish person with blue eyes and white skin, daddy could be a um, Asian person or a Chinese person with a pale yellowish white skin and uh, black eyes, black hair. Anna can be a unique trait of both. See, that is genetically different to parent cells. Now, parent cells divide only once to produce daughter cells. Parent cells divide twice to produce four daughter cells. Mitosis crossing over happens. Meiosis crossing over involved in prophase one, in meiosis one. Okay, this is a very detailed description. Bullet screenshot. Now, this is a very long, uh, detailed uh, presentation. Okay, it's pretty much the same. Just remember, meiosis promotes variation. Uh, mitosis is just identical parental genotype. Okay, it's just replication. And empat daughter cells dihasilkan di meiosis, dua je di mitosis. All right. So crossing over is the only major <coughs> difference. And halving lah of your haploid and diploid cells. So these are your key points. Nanti minta essay ke apa, lapan maka senang je nak jawab. Empat maka senang nak jawab. Differences kan? So importance of meiotic cell division. Kenapa penting my meiosis? Ensure the diploid number of chromosomes in medium provides your genetic variation supaya ada perbezaan genetik. Alright, this is for plants and for humans. Okay, asexual reproduction, mitosis produces offspring that are identical to parent. Um, many bacteria do this, your own body cells do this. Sexual reproduction produces genetic variation. If meiosis does not occur properly, the gametes formed will have abnormal number of chromosomes marked so near. Kalau meiosis gagal, dan tidak berlaku dengan elok, number of chromosomes akan berubah. Kalau bukan 46 number of chromosomes, kalau you ada 47, you have Klein factor syndrome and Down syndrome. Now, people might call it cacat, which is not very good term. Orang upaya, kurang upaya is another term. But the right symptoms is called Down syndrome and uh, Klein factor syndrome, where you have more chromosomes. Kurang chromosome pun bahaya juga, you get Turner syndrome. Therefore, this process is a very critical and crucial process, okay? Down syndrome is how the baby might look. A meiotic error might happen. This is not something wrong or something error might happen and that is normal. This is, this is just how life is, okay? Anaphase or anaphase 2, di mana pemecahan, the segregation of, uh, this might be a hot question sometimes, so the segregation of uh, your whole chromosomes might not be done well. Therefore, you end up with Down syndrome. Okay, so when you meet someone who's Down syndrome, respect them. It's not their fault for being like that. They are just born like that. And the only one who can you can question is for their creation like that is God. So if you dare to question God, go and ask them. So, NFA's homologous chromosome fail to separate. Therefore, in NFA's two sister chromatids fail to separate. So as you can see in this gamba, Number of chromosomes lari, okay? It's not balanced. Now, because of this non this, this junction in meiosis 1, okay, disebabkan pemecahan yang tidak betul, we end up with these problems, Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Okay, if both chromosomes 21 homologs go to the same pole, resulting egg is fertilized will be trisomic of chromosome 21. All right? So this is your Down syndrome karyotype, okay? So you will see in your karyotype is your chromosomal shapes and forms. Each of these numbers uh, is XX yang you nampak dekat hujung kanan tu adalah your sex chromosomes and that will determine uh, if you have XY, you're a male or you have XX, you're a female macam tu, okay? I'll let you know later. And then all these other traits, contohnya your number 11, number 10 will determine your height or your weight or your color or your skin. Okay, height weight all mostly depending on your environment, but the genetic materials that is passed down to you, your intelligence, a bit of genetic is involved. All of this is based on your karyotype. Chance of having Down syndrome child goes up with maternal age. 
That is why they say, kalau nak kahwin, kahwin awal. So the best age is for 30. Um, 35 is still okay, right? Um, but the people who are having marriage during 50 years old, 45 years old, uh, 40 years old, 35 is just taking a bit of risk. But usually, orang yang kahwin awal, muda-muda, they wouldn't have this problem. Why? Because unlike the male uh, production of semen or testes or sperm cells when they are hitting puberty, perempuan bukan macam tu. Sejak lahir dah ada formation of ovum. So when they're hitting puberty in the age of 20 to 30, some oh, people say, oh, this is the right age to get married, get married fast. But please do not get married if you're under age. That is below 18. That is wrong in terms of legality in Malaysia, especially in few states. Okay, there is a huge part of life, so do not even think about nakawin awal-awal, okay? But the risk of getting married late is because as you grow older, your ovum punya numbers of ovum kurang. Synthesization of ovum pun kurang. Therefore, that is why when they are having a late baby, chances for the baby to develop a Down syndrome is high, right? So that is why old people advise to get married by the age of 30. Do not get married by the age of 15, okay? You might go to jail, All right? So egg is in the center of picture. Many cumulus cells from, over, uh, from the ovary are seen around the egg. This is a low quality oocyte from a woman. 41 years old, egg is irregularly shaped and dark. A good egg from a 32 year old woman looks so circular shaped, okay? Um, looks better than what you have in your 41. All right, this is not downgrading old woman oocyte. This is just stating facts and signs here, okay? Now, question, the diagram below represent the karyotype. Okay, they might ask what is karyotype, so you must be aware of it, okay, of human. Why does the structure shown in figure two have an X-shaped form? Okay, figure two, X-shaped, all right. Two sister chromatids are joined at the central mirror. That is the answer. All right, this is metaphase because they are all aligned in the metaphase, okay. Now, cell A has eight chromatids, okay, cell the cell in diagram A has 20 units of DNA. How many units of DNA would be there in a cell from this plant of at the end of mitosis dengan meiosis? Okay, this is a very unique question. Kalau dia dah beritahu, you ada 20 unit, you kena kira macam mana? How? At the end of mitosis, you akan ada empat kromosom. Okay, kenapa? Uh, so 10 units. How is that possible? Meiosis pula kenapa ada 5 unit? It's very simple, guys. It's just halving. Halfing, halfing, tu je, right? So, you, cell A has eight chromatids, okay, which equals to 20 units, all right? That is what we are saying here, okay? As you can see here, in mitosis, you nampak tak? Ada satu, dua, tiga, empat, meaning there's four homologous chromosomes, that is eight chromatids, and they are stating that it, it is representing doplo unit. So, at the end of mitosis, you had the empat chromosome je, present, right? So, you get 10 units here. Why? Because 8 unit adalah, 8 chromatid adalah 20 unit. You ada 4 chromosome tinggal, you ada less 10 unit. Simple as that. Meiosis is 2N for cell A is 4. Okay? And you say meiosis 1. You can see that is it has 4 chromosomes. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4. You have 4 chromosomes. Okay? And it equals to 10 units, all right? Because they say it's 10 units because it's 2N, all right? It's 2N here. Now, that is a 2N. The N would be proper, okay? So at the end of meiosis 2, okay, what will happen is it's being half to 2. And a dual chromosome je tinggal. So it's a game of halfing, halfing je. Jadi, you ada 5 unit tinggal. Daripada 10 unit. This is how the deal is done, all right? Okay, don't be confused eh, kenapa meiosis terus jawapan dia 10? Sebab awal-awal, diagram A dia mengatakan dia ada 20. Lepas mitosis baru dia pergi kepada meiosis. So, jawapan dia daripada 20 jadi 10, right? The 10 from there comes to here. So, this is so that when you're targeted questions like this in SPM, you're able to answer. So, 
Do you guys have any questions about mitosis, meiosis? This is just genetic variation. Meiosis occurs in three ways. Crossing over prophase, random orientation of bivalence, metaphase one, and random orientation of sister chromatids. Random orientation is the placing of your sister chromatids. Okay, so crossing over is one thing. Okay, meiosis is how your new combinations happen. Crossing over does not create new LLs, it simply recombines existing one. LL adalah um, a part of a trait, okay, meaning it carries a trait, a unique trait, okay, that is LL. So LL contohnya, this plant has a LL of uh, height, or this plant has a LL of um, good fruit trait, okay, that is your LL. So we call this LL by A or B, okay, so A, LL, B, LL, macam tu. Teacher, is it premature baby have syndrome? Yeah. Yes. Baby spoon, memang, babies lah, the most of this premature. Premature meaning hasn't even been born yet, right? Okay, yeah, do they, they do have it. Okay, as they develop, they sure have it lah. So baby, when you're a kid, you probably wouldn't know and still in the womb. That is why when after um, pregnancy, they would uh, check it out. In the womb, when they have carry out scan, boleh lah nampak. Baby is a healthy state or no, but there are chances you wouldn't even know. That's why when they see something is wrong, some parents would like to carry out uh, abortion. All right, I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's still something. So random orientation of bivalence happens. Okay, no number of different combination like do n. Okay, this is how your combination happen. Possibility satu eh. So kalau you ada two equally probable arrangement of chromosomes at metaphase one. You probably dapat biru-biru merah-merah, okay? Ataupun atau bivalent di mana? There will be the, the kedudukan je sudah lain dah, okay? So this is another um, chance for crossing, not crossing over, tapi genetic variation to happen. Okay, guys. Now we have gametogenesis and spermatogenesis, which is very, very, very detailed and tak sempat lah when I learn it today because we are already ending near of our class so oogenesis, oogonium right so a lot of terms you will learn today next class and that is all from me today do you guys have any questions Yeah, go on. Yes, Shamal. How about the rest? Any question, guys? Adina, do you have more interesting question? What happens when you learn a music instrument? Okay. When you learn a music instrument, that is a very odd question. Can you be more specific? When you learn a music instrument, you are becoming more relaxed. For the baby, is it for this chapter you're talking? Is it the thing passed down? What happens to the brain? Oh, okay. All right, so science states that when you learn a music instrument, you become more creative. You become more, okay. Senang, you are brushing teeth with your right hand or your left hand. Try to change it, how you, different you'll feel, right? Or you are, that is why if you never played music instrument, you suddenly go and mind drum, you are impossible for you to just play drum because you probably have a dominant right hand your left hand might be weak drummers they already know which is the dominant hand which is their left hand which is weaker hand probably lah depends on the people so they are trained to using both hands for music same goes to piano same goes to shallow same goes to any music instruments that is requiring to play with a different vocal energy so all of these changes manipulating using your two hands your legs as well some music instruments requires you to mind kaki juga all of this creates different brain waves. It is putting you to try out new things, practicing you to use both sides of your brain. Therefore, you have a right brain and your left brain. Certain to creativity, certain to logical people say. So, as a musician plays, you're using two sides of your brain because you're targeting your full body to play an instrument, right? And when that happens, not only music re relaxes and calms your minds, you are practicing both of your brain to function in the same time. 
therefore your brain is creating a more new hormones new chemicals for your brain you might be a happy person playing music listening to the music at the same time you become much more creative person playing music that's why some musicians they can drive in using both hands meaning some if you drive later on you know you'll have a dominant hand okay and you will have memang you drive pakai dua tangan tapi kalau bosan you usually tend to drive with one hand it's just wrong but people do it all right and you know your writing hand your eating uh, hand you usually you use right hand but some people are very used to left hands right and when you train both hands you are becoming a better person because you are allowing your brain to utilize both brains at the same time therefore that's what happens but sorry to say things like that let's say you're a musician your traits ataupun your acting skills is it passing down genetically it's a huge question it's a chance it's a luck it's more to your environment um tak semestinya anak ayah doktor anak doktor juga doesn't work that way intelligence yes passed down um talent yes passed down but it's not a, a sure thing all right so any other question faham tak apa ayah ajar aku boleh sangat or very detailed i teach or very fast everything okay guys very silent today okay all right so that is all with our class today for how twin formed okay a very good question how twin forms is very simple when the sperm hits the ovum all right a zygote is formed right now for a sperm to hit a ovum ovum okay satu sperm satu ovum satu anak what if dua sperm ataupun satu sperm hit two ovum you need two ovum by the way you have a lot of sperm but mostly only it'll be hitting one uh, sperm in one fallopian tube but there is chances for two also to hit depends twins ada yang twin muka sama ada yang twin muka lain ada twin anak warna putih anak warna hitam ada twin anak laki anak perempuan tapi muka sama ada juga twin muka hitam muka putih tapi satu laki satu perempuan it is all a random chance and in detail i can only teach it to you when i'm teaching um reproduction to be a future um subject so gametogenesis or genesis is just the beginning very interesting question very well done but if i tell more details you'll probably be confused so let's just stop with that here all right any further questions you have